The town of Galibalu, on a peninsula located in the Dardanelles in Turkey, is a picturesque and inviting place. It is important for trade and is relaxing for both locals and tourists. However, because of the town's strategic location, it wasn't always such a peaceful place. You might have never heard of Galibalu, but the English translation might ring a bell, Gallipoli. Just across this peninsula lies the site of one of the most historic and defining battles during World War I. The Gallipoli campaign took place between April 25, 1915 and January 9, 1916 between the Allied forces and the Ottoman Empire. The Allies wanted to capture the Ottoman capital of Constantinople, now Istanbul, and take them out of the war while securing a sea route to Russia through the Dardanelles. They went in with confidence, but were completely defeated by the Turks. There are over a half million casualties, many of the soldiers in their early 20s. The battle is remembered as a profound moment that shaped the national identities of both the Turks and the Anzacs. For the Australians and New Zealanders, Gallipoli represents the birth of national consciousness and a psychological break in their ties with the British Empire. For the Turkish people, a national hero emerged from the struggle, Mustafa Kemal, known as Ataturk. Ataturk, the father of modern-day Turkey, was a colonel here at the Battle of Gallipoli. Later in his life, he felt compelled to come pay tribute to the fallen soldiers, not only his Turkish troops, but the Allies who had been his enemies at the time. The plaque reads, after having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. He did not separate the Turks from the Brits or Brits from the Turks because they followed the orders. Turks followed the orders, Brits followed the orders, Anzac fo followed the orders. And all of them died here for nothing. So how can you distinguish one from each other? The battle laid the grounds for the Turkish independence. Soon after, they established the Republic of Turkey. This national confidence is still celebrated today by the people who visit the site. This monument commemorates the 57th Regiment. At a crucial point in the campaign, the Allies were in the position to gain this high ground. Ataturk gave a command to the troops. He said, I'm not ordering you to fight, I'm ordering you to die. The regiment followed the order, buying time for reinforcement. This point was the farthest the Allies ever got. Just next to the monument is a statue of an old man and his granddaughter that means something special to the Turks. The artist depicted two generations there, the one who fought and the one living in the peace of that fight. And they are holding hands and that holding hand is connecting two periods to each other with the memories, with the suffers, and she is smiling, so she is thankful to grandpa. We have to appreciate what our ancestors did for us. The gravity of the sacrifices made by those soldiers is not lost on those who come here. Whenever I visit Gallipoli campaign, it's each time I tell myself that we stop fighting. So, and there are certain times that uh, I cried on this battlefield and uh, when I hear, uh, when I tell the stories of the soldiers, I cry. So this is a place to mourn and to learn. The fallen soldiers here remind us of life's fragility and man's destructive powers. But as we reflect here on this hollowed ground, we also recognize our own desires for peace and understanding. I'm Gracie Ditzler, GUTV in Turkey.